are these people? I don't know. What's all these buses for? Why are they here? Who are these kids? I don't like these new kids on our turf. so happy to be back. It feels great being back. I missed everybody. Like we were away for what, four or five months and it feels like, it feels like it was still last season. It's so weird. Um, my hair. It's blonde now. Um, it's kind of caramelly. That's, that's a big change. You know, you don't see everybody for like five months and then to all come back, it's nice. It does feel like how we usually start um, the new season in September, but now we're starting it in like January. So that's kind of weird, like we were outside shooting and they had all the fake snow and everyone's dressed up like it's winter. Uh, right now is uh, the first day back from the uh, holiday season and now we see that all the Lakers kids have invaded our school. Lakers has burned down and now everyone Why is... Why are you putting it in quotes? It actually burned down. Did it burn down? Until the Lakers fire damage is repaired, you'll be experiencing a little less elbow room. There's a new batch of kids from Lakers. I am one of them. And uh, so now the school is overpopulated, I'd say. And it's crazy busy. There's a million people around. And they all happen to be giving me dirty looks right now. And even though we had a few isolated negative incidences last semester. Wait, JT. That ain't sitting well with that ain't cool, old Toby man. here. No. Of course there's going to be conflict. What do you think the grass is about, kids? As if you look closely at the back of at the scene later on, you'll see me just staring at all the people looking at who I'm going to get into a fight with this year. So you've got the two teams that are supporting Lakers being there, and then the people that are so against it and they want to kick Lakers out, so that'll be really interesting. Yeah, way missed a take, bro. <laughs> That's me not work. I have to go to the bathroom, okay? I think Lakers might be here to stay. I can't really say. <laughs> it's not the classic like, line. No, it's it's you have to watch to find out. It's gonna be lots of cute girls, and lots of guys to fight. It's behind the scenes, and this is the scene. You're over here behind it, so enjoy it. Pretty kicking, it's kicking butt and bum over here. Is that good? Well, this is a big, exciting, colorful scene. It's the TU Pride evening, so. There's drag queens, there's pride flags, there's color, and it's just this big pride celebration. We're here on the set of Degrassi, guys, and uh, we're shooting end promos. Adamo's really upset, and rightfully so, because we're all like having a ball downstairs shooting these promos, and he's like completely like quarantined off. It's like he has a disease or something, and no one wants to see him. And uh, I don't know what Marco's doing, or Adamo's doing upstairs. <laughs> But I hear it's getting pretty crazy. <laughs> Bobby Graham is always just, <laughs> just pooping on my life. <laughs> why, why, why are there drag queens upstairs? Uh, it's Adamo's birthday, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Aubrey Graham would make a great drag queen. You know. Why is this like? Why is this about Adamo? Who cares, man? Adamo is a huge loser. He kind of knows it though, so it's not it's not so bad. Like he embraces it. Do you Lauren call me a loser? Yeah. Big fat loser. Beautiful food, and you just say, "Get us some more calamari." Okay. She's jealous. Epitome. This is like 
like territory that I have never been on before and I happen to have the hugest fear of heights so it's really a fun day at work today. <laughs> this is my first time being on the roof. It's only two stories up. No, yeah, no, never. I come up here all the time. I'm pretty sure the air is thinner here. We're shooting the scene right now. It's basically Darcy trying to take back control of her life in a not so good way. For my first time doing a kissing scene too. So this is first kiss. It's my first kiss. She's really hit a, a very, very low point, pretty much rock bottom about all the stuff that happened to her earlier in the season. I'm crazy, Penny. Have you heard? I'm a crazy slut. It's pretty much been the most intense year that I've had like in my life. I am supportive though if you're doing like an emotional scene I won't laugh at them or pick my nose. Jamie is a goof. Sometimes you just need to be like, hey Jamie, like I'm in the space right now. I can't joke around. I can't laugh at you. Like I can't take part in any of that silliness. Because I need to be serious. But it's definitely a lot of fun. It's not a hard thing to do at all. I said, Burr, it's cold in here. I said, there must be some panthers in the atmosphere. I said, oh, we, oh, we, oh. Ice, ice, ice. I love heights. I, I love heights. It's almost like, it almost just feels like uh, like a movie. It's very, it's like more cinematic and it's just got all those elements that like a great like road trip film. So we're shooting spring, right? And the show is spring, and in reality, it's the middle of summer. That's what happens when you come to the country. Bugs, mice, leaves. Mike is in every shot and can't derobe like I can. I'm not in the white beater in the shot. I like to derobe after the day is done, you know? I like to watch you derobe. In Canada, we go party up at the local universities. The small town universities are a hotbed for mischief and um, debauchery. Liberty's got some pals up in Smithdale. She's going up to uh, parte in one of the sororities there. Hot. I love it. It's pretty fun. So good. It's nice just to be out of the city and like be able to breathe. <laughs> Sit on the rock. There are bugs. She's not a country girl, if you haven't noticed. Although an ant crawled up her leg the other day, and I've never seen anyone so freaked out. She jumped up and yelped, and everyone heard her. But it's okay. <laughs> of course. The shrug. Away with murder. <laughs> We've been in the heat since 7 a.m. In this scene, we're arriving at the, the sorority house and we just realized that she's got cute fraternity brothers. So we go in and like try and meet them. Because we're creeps like that. Yeah, I need to get over JT. I would only join a sorority if I didn't have to be a pledge and I just went straight to a leader and could boss people around. I would join a sorority if I liked the people that were in it. Ooh, Miriam, always has a good answer. <laughs> I would definitely be part of a sorority. Um, okay, I'm gonna be a sorority. So I, can, so I can step on little people. You've gone. I'm looking at a, this really nice big book. I can't read though. I tried enrolling in Degrassi, but apparently it's a fake school. <laughs> I 
And then I'll see you on the inside oh, All you need to know Something different from the outside Oh, something new to show Seriously? <laughs> These guys, we were in uh, a band called Funkasaurus Rex together for uh, how long? Like five years. Five years. For a while. Played the circuit. We did some shows. We did, we did like three shows, shows maybe. <laughs> yeah, I've been loving it. I had a tough year in the first year. It was hard. My first year, like moving away from home and stuff. But uh, this past year was amazing. amazing. Yeah, I wrote a one-man show I did in Montreal. It was amazing. It's amazing. It was, it was amazing. It was probably the best thing I've ever done. Hard work. Being an actor. But I'm looking forward to going back to Montreal and my roommates and hanging out there and stuff. Look how uh, he acts like he just really doesn't want to be here. We all love Jake. Like he comes back for one episode a year and they make him a rock star. And he gets to bring his real band in with him. The last time uh, me and Kate Todd hung out was on Radio Free Roscoe. Yes. Making out on set. <laughs> he was a bad influence on me. So they bring in the lovely Kate Todd in a tight, slim fitting purple dragon dress. If, if they brought Jimmy back for one episode, like two years down the line, what, what would he do? He would roll by in a wheelchair in one scene, and that would be it. And what would they do for me? I, I would have no hair, and that would be it. I, I feel like I should ignore him because I'm involved with Jay now. The temptation is just... <laughs> I've said from the beginning you should end up with Ashley. Because I think they're the most alike. Can you feel the pining? I think I heard it. My heart aches. Ellie was uh, you know, fully uh, supporting Craig. With Ashley, it felt uh, sort of both ways. That he was sort of supporting her and her music, too. Manny was just for play, man. Do <laughs> Gepsy's yeah. back? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I've gone through many, many hairstyles in the years. Some have been good, some not so good. I get compliments every so often, sometimes insults. Remember when you had that flip and I started not being your friend? But what I realized is... But we're dancing with the rest of the group. We're at the beautiful Spring Fever school dance. Yeah. Oh, uh, Manny, to play. Extreme running. We're dancing in the background. This episode is called Oh Sweet Child of Sweet Child of Mine. Or <laughs> So this episode is called Sweet Child of Mine. Right now, dance scene. These kind of scenes are always awkward, especially if there's if it's just dancing, it's fine, but if there's dancing and talking, then you're just like pretending and there's no music. This is so great. I'm having such a great time. It's been so long. Uh, was it? Just been busy, you know. Last season, um, Jay, Mike's character, was actually expelled. In order to get into the dance, to dance with Manny, he's concocted the disguise. That's gross. That's right. That's true. <laughs> what a clever disguise. <laughs>
It's like he eats babies. <laughs> They're letting me keep the mustache, and I'm gonna wear it home. See if any of my friends notice, say anything, you know? Like, dude, what's, is there, what's that? Is that an animal on your face? <laughs> Okay, then. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very like um, Miami Vice, you know? you know, like that kind of stuff. But... Lucas is an old friend. Let's say he's an old friend. We had a kid <laughs> prior to um, my casting. It was it was up in the air as to who uh, the father of Isabella was. Uh, there, there had been talk that it, uh, it was, I, I think, um, the character Nick as well as uh, Johnny's character. You know, it was. I was, I was shocked. Like, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great arc, and I like where it's going. Crazy, crazy stuff. Okay. First team. Oh, it's me. It's not even me. What am I kidding? In this scene, I'm just dancing in the background. <laughs> Hey, I'm Ray Ablack. I play Sav. Action! I'm, I'm the lead guitarist in this heavy band. We kind of suck. We kind of suck, don't we? <laughs> no. No one can stop. Whenever I'm not filming like this, which is almost all of the time, I'm uh, I'm interning in corporate affairs. Good afternoon, Epitome Pictures. Here we have Joanne Dillard, Nick Wong, and Raymond Ablack. That's the door for me. That's how a true intern does stuff. <laughs> what it, in fact I'm doing is I'm trying to let the writers see me so they'll put me in an episode. Uh, behind us, we're doing a behind the scenes. Oh. Yeah, of this baller's life. <laughs> he laughs, he laughs because he knows that it's true. This is Mark right here. Mark is a baller. Like Big baller. Here's John, another baller. Hi, mommy on my TV, mommy. <laughs> you go over here to Teresa. You gotta give her a little smacker on, That's the, right. on the cheek. If you went into the cupboard. Then you crack it open. You just no snack, no food. <laughs> <laughs> then, mm. then you get some candy. And then these are my two favorite girls to just come and chill with. Yeah. I have something great to show you, Ray. Well, that's enough of that. When's our, Bring when's it our when candy I run? After the behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> and over here we have Linda Schuyler and Stephen Stone's offices. Um, I want to take you in there, but even even as my ballin' status, I don't think I can. Do you uh, prefer more working in front of the camera? Definitely in front of the camera. Definitely. Because it's hard to get behind the camera. He's not actually busy. He's just hiding. That, that phone isn't even on. It didn't even ring. <laughs> oh my god. Let's get a shot of this. I was, I feel like Lauren would come back and like scrape the tape off the thing and like put it on like a frame in her room. I should take a sandbag for all those times they sandbagged me. And it was such an insult, I was told. I didn't think so. I thought it was helpful. Damn. Do you think they could get away with just taking these or would they accuse a crew member and fire someone? Hey, only Mark? It's a good thing my best friend defended me. Oh, oh no, wait, you totally didn't. In this scene, I do what no one should ever be forced to do. This is not voluntary. Yes, both eyes. Both eyes, maybe back a tiny bit, but not much. Okay, nice. Let's do another one. Real quick. I had um, I had a piece of garlic and onion. 
and then thought that I applied perfume. He was like, and you sprayed yourself to smell nice too. And I was like, no, don't flatter yourself. And then, and then I go, <laughs> I saw that movie once. <laughs> it's like wrong. This is just another one who happens to be my best friend. We're just friends, okay? Nothing more. Whoa! Marco, we just kissed. It's gonna be weird, but I already kissed Lauren today. Watch! Ew! I've honestly kissed so many people on the show, like, more than in real life. Like the number of boys, it's disgusting. It's just, I mean, I like, no, just we were walking up the stairs and I was like, I feel weird even like going to say bye to people because I'm gonna see them all like next week. Like, I know I have to come back here, you know? And yeah. I am like, we have our off party and whatever. It's not like I'm never gonna see these people again. It's for me, it's just like, it's Paige. Like, I'm just like genuinely so sad. Oh my god, I can start crying again. It is a big deal, Ellie. We almost crossed the line. So what? Then we stopped, and then we fell asleep. Why is this a crisis? I kicked it so no one could see it, but I knew where I put it so that I could show you. Is that the grossest thing you've ever seen? It's pretty nasty. It looks like my ferret. It can only be mine. Look at the dust on this. Like, that's a lawsuit. Like, you can't even put this in because, like, that's disgusting that this is here, like, a year later. I'd like to say thank you to all the people who watched the show and not only identified with my character, but then saw all the behind-the-scenes stuff and learned about my life and who I am. Oh, uh, I'm... I hope they're as sad as I am. <laughs> Can you stay a little? Because I feel like I gave a really true representation of who I am on these little things. And I like talking to you guys on the street. You know, you're all really nice. And I thank you for your support and for your letters of encouragement that got me through some tough times um, of insecurity. And it's hurting us. It's hurting our real relationships. Then, I guess we're moving out. That was acting. <laughs> That's what acting is. Who knew? It's like she was actually like, imagine we weren't leaving and this wasn't the end of the show. She was actually genuinely that sad that Marco, Ellie, and Paige are splitting up that she shed real tears. I just, I've shed real tears before. That's a lie. I haven't. Look at this freaking Marlon Brando wanted the only here thing. Feeling it, man. I'm feeling it. The vibe is just, the energy is great. I'm loving the new music. I'm loving the song. Yeah. It was really special because this is such a important show. It's the end of the season. It's a prom. The m most of the filming stuff that I've done have been like in a video set. So this was a bit different because I, I couldn't look at the camera. Cheers, Degrassi. Thank you for having me and your lovely prom. And now let's cheers. <laughs> 
Well, music is such a powerful way to connect and communicate. I just love music for music's sake, but also I like to say something. I mean, that's some of the things that Degrassi touches on, is that there's so many different uh, issues and things that people go through, and it's very personal. so amazing to watch because mm -hmm. between takes you're getting down with the cast and you're getting down yeah. with the extras and just having yeah. fun. international recording artist playing. I'm pretty sure it was a DJ. I'm excited. Some DJs are always mediocre. They're always mediocre. So. I think it's the same. I really like the setup, like all the decorations everywhere. And I'm with friends either way, so I guess that makes it a good prom. Quietly <laughs> lining it up. Jacket? I think it's a lot like my prom because I feel like I've known these guys for as long as I knew a bunch of my friends from high school. So this is, um, holds a special place. It's sentimental. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, it is a little weird. Like, it doesn't really feel like it's been seven years. I love my dress. It's a Vivian Tan dress. We got it at Honey. Yeah, so I'm really excited to be wearing it. I'll let me buy it after. I need to ask you something. As a friend? I dress for something too, but not just as a friend. It's, this is one of the three dances I know. It's just you put your hands up and you do this. My, a couple of my friends show this to me. It's the light bulbs. And it's just the light bulb dance. This is it. This, this is why I don't go to clubs. You don't move? No, it's the light bulb. I'm going to say I'll miss Miriam the most because I don't think Cassie heard me. So. We were together and we were like before Degrassi. You were at my bar mitzvah. I know. That's I was how, at your bar mitzvah. You were at my bar mitzvah. I was too. I mean, we all knew it was coming, and I don't think it's that weird graduating. I mean, every single year our characters grow more and more, and this is just another, another chapter in our characters' lives. Hey, dear. Miss Leeboy. I have a friend 
doing this exact job, like working as a, a personal assistant to the personal shopper at a big department store. So, you know, I've got all the ins. This is one of my best friend's dresses. She let me borrow it. Alyssa, thank you. Well, I kind of feel silly saying it because they're three months older than me, but I really look up to the Olsen twins <laughs> for fashion. I think they are, um, I don't know, they're willing to take risks and be creative. Well, the wonderful thing about it is that people like this actually exist. They're real. I, I, I know some of them and they're fabulous, but scary. I would never want a personal shopper because I like to do the shopping myself, right? That's not the fun. The only place, can, right before the, you know what, you were better, can I take a beat there? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then, oh no, fire. absolutely. Okay, uh -huh. I'm trying it. Okay, another rehearsal. Absolutely love Marc Jacobs. Uh, everything to his ads in magazines, it's just, it's beautiful. Um, his shoes, everything, his perfume, I love. So, big Mark fan. Yeah, these are murdering my beat right now. Oh, hey, hi. See that? That's nice. Oh, wait, I'm being called. Sorry. <laughs> it's all great to climb up on your high horse, but at least that girl was working for something. It's time for Paige to grow up. I'm done. Oh yeah! Okay. I love this girl. And I love Nancy. I love her. She's the best. <laughs> she just wants to be on TV. Coexist. My flow is a glass box with no exits, so you can observe why you trapped in it. Took my lady's track and I sprinkled some rap in it, and now they like, please, please tell us your reality, Jay. We can't fathom how it feel to be forever confined. My mother always told me what to do with my best foot, so to this day you know that it is never behind. And metaphorically, I'm ahead of the rest, and proud of the fact that I've accomplished. Well, this that. episode, it's about finding yet another uh, avenue which she's comfortable in, and. Um, Basically, he starts, uh, he starts doing music. I was a Biggie fan. Um, I didn't really get too into Pac, but I, I read his poetry. I respect definitely like the type of man he was. Um, I'm a big Tribe Called Quest fan. I get on stage in front of like 10,000 people sometimes and just rock. Like, but now, like today, there's like 100 background here and like playback. Like, I just feel so weird. Like, I can't even be funny right now. I just feel like odd. <laughs> I can't even like be, I can't do an Aubrey Graham show right now. Like I'm just not in that mood, I can't do it. If I may, I toot my own horn for a second. Toot toot. What I told Stefan is, for the close up, I want a regular chair. I don't want to sit in a wheelchair. So that, because I, I feel like I'd perform differently if I was sitting in a regular chair than sitting in a wheelchair. When I get like remotely exhausted and my palms get sweaty from the, from the, ch ch from the chair's vinyl, I, I have we have a like we have a thing where like he'll be like across the room and I'll just go Sweet. and he'll come in and sit and he sits there for as long as I want because I've been here for seven years and I was, that's in my rider now. Okay, if tonight goes well, it could mean big things down the road for both of us. I think it's great. I mean, like I knew. I, I knew Audrey rapped, but I, I said, Audrey? Wow, he's gonna slap me. Yeah. I said, tell me lies. Oh. I said, tell me lies. Yeah. I said, tell me lies. Look, man. Can I have a private conversation about strip clubs and her working there?
Um, yeah, big episode, big storyline for Spinner. It gets testicular cancer. The worst kind for him because, like, Spinner's known as the, the playboy. Girls around him all the time, and now this is... This is really depriving of his manhood. Like, what, what's he gonna do? But you know what he does? He fights. He fights to the death. And that's what this episode's all about. Danny! Danny! What on earth is going on here? Danny, what's it look like? We're doing an increase the peace thing, and then uh, I find out that my brother Danny is in a fight, so I come out to try to stop it. Liberty is going to push me up the fence. And uh, Sky Lucas ends up saying something that's going to provoke me, so I just let him have it. She kicks his ass. Yeah. How dare you! Hey, Liberty, okay. Get off me! Spare, get off me! Uh, preparing for the fight scenes? Uh... Just get angry at this kid. Like, just, I want to punch him, so I just get ready and then just pretend that Lucas's face is Aubrey, and there you go. Yeah, well, we have a stunt coordinator. You can actually see him over there. So I'm Jamie Jones. I'm the stunt coordinator on this episode. He's a dangerous fella. He's, he's trained in martial arts and all types of stuff. So, yeah, he's, he's coordinating all the scenes, gets us strapped with pads, teaching us proper form, you know? Yeah! We had a rehearsal day last week. Coordinating fights are always fun. Like, we, we all have a good time during it. How dare you? <laughs> no! Mark, stop! <laughs> it was really fun. It was really fun. I've never, had, I've never got to do a fight scene before, so I just got to, like, take all that pent-up <laughs> anger and just unleash it. Like, we, we all have a good time during it, and it looks really painful, but it's not. We're all good. I think I got a little scratch somewhere. How dare you! <laughs> Half speed, guys. Okay, that's good. Okay, carry on. Okay, let's pick it up from pulling her off. Clark to my debut. Mike's just jealous because I didn't say him. She's right. Can you sit beside Cassie? There's something on the chair. You are impossible to work with. You are impossible to work with. This is how we get our lip balm. Ew, boys wear makeup. <laughs> so? Makes me feel pretty. This is Emma's new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> this episode we're wearing ugly dresses. Well, come on, come on, look at, look at me. Look at me. Excuse me. And then, I mean, would you want to? You know what? I love this dress. I think it's the hottest oh, yeah. thing I've ever worn. Oh! Mm, yeah. You know, if this was my debut, I'd have to bring Ryan Cooley. Because he's just so funny. Have to? Like someone's making her you take him. If it was your debut and you had a pretty little dress. I, I probably would bring Sarah. You're saying no. You're saying no to me. 
down on one knee. What? No, no, no. Sarah Bearable to shower. Will you go to the debut with me? Can I just get a can I can I just get can I just get just, just, Oh I think there's a little love going on right here. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah? What would make you say that? <laughs> or, I gotta go. In this episode, Ellie sort of establishes or reestablishes Ellie's drinking issue. Just had to like take lots of generous sips um, throughout all the scenes. Like I always have a cup with me. I'm drinking like pure sugar, like cranberry juice, and gulps and gulps and gulps. What's up? Background. I don't even want to think about it. It was pretty gross. When Phil asked me to chug the whole thing, I thought it might be a stunt or a practical joke. Are you being serious or is this for No, I am being serious. He, he really thought that Ellie would do that in the scene, and so I, of course, had to do that. Well done. Turn. I couldn't finish. Turn. Finish. You want to go through, huh? So, background, you can step off. I just went to the washroom, um, but my bladder is still full of cranberry cocktail. <laughs>